Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique. And today we're checking out the Shaper Box from Cable Guys. And specifically, we're gonna be checking out the Time Shaper. Shaper Box comes as a bunch of different effects, but you can actually buy each of the effects modules separately if you wish, instead of just buying the bundle. So uh, links in the video description if you wanna check this stuff out. But in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to turn this simple just drum loop into this. I mean, there's a huge difference there. And the point of the video is to show you how to get started doing something like this so you can go forth and do whatever you want. Now, obviously I'm using percussion, but this works on literally everything. I've made some really funky tech house bass lines, some poppy vocal effects and so on and so forth. So really this guy's the limit, but principally we're gonna focus on how to do something like this. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and delete ShaperBox and just drop a new one on there, okay? So this is the launch screen and we're gonna start by time. And the reason why is this is how we're gonna kind of get our different rhythms. Now, one of the cool things about ShaperBox is it's up to three different bands and you make your bands over here and we can actually pop it open to C. And what we're gonna do is look for three different interesting frequency ranges inside of this one drum hit. So you can kind of see we got a mid to low hit here, and then we're gonna take the rest as high and kind of like a snare, and then the lows as a bass hit. And that's pretty much it. So if I close down here, we can solo those just to make sure. If I click on high, if I click on mid, and if I click on low. So now we can use Time Shaper's wavetables to make interesting results. So for the first one on the low here, while I have it soloed, I'm gonna actually come over to pitch and let's just pitch it down like this. So we already have a nice bassy kick drum. Let's jump over to the mids and choose a different one. And this is gonna be completely separate from that low. So if I come into something like stutter and choose this, And if I unsolo that, we already have a nice pattern that actually sounds like three different percussive instruments happening at the same time. But we can come over to high and maybe try something else out. and we're well on our way. Now there's actually a really cool thing inside of ShaperBox called MIDI switching, where we can save these different wave shapes and then trigger them using our MIDI, which I had in the original project. And I'm gonna get you started doing that here, but you're gonna obviously need to finesse stuff. So there are actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different slots that we can fill up. And it's on a per module per band basis. So it's actually color coded. If I come in here and put volume shaper on here and let's do some ducking or something like that and add it to here and then jump over to time and then turn on MIDI key switching, you'll see that it's yellow, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of that for now. And not only is it color coded per module, but it's color coded per band. So if I come up here into the low and save that to this first one, you can see that it's a dark green. But if I switch to mid, and then save, save this one and kind of overwrite it. Or actually let's put it on this one. You'll see that it's a lighter color. So the lower bands are darker and then you get lighter or brighter as you go up the bands. So if I come over to high now and come over here, boom. Okay, you can see that there's a difference in lighting there. So we can use this to make like a fill, for example, like I did with the original project. So inside of Ableton Live, I have my MIDI clip and it starts on C sharp. And if you hover over here, you'll actually see, or it actually just says it there, C sharp. That's C sharp three. And if I come in here to the MIDI channel in Ableton Live, I can send it to my sh uh, shaper box and it's gonna automatically select that because it's the only thing on that channel that can accept MIDI. So let's say that I want to make a different low pattern. What I can do is turn it off just so we can uh, focus on the pattern. I'm gonna come in here to low and I'm gonna solo it. And let's try out a different one. Let's come in here to pitch and get something crazy. That 
that's a little too crazy. You know, maybe we want that one. What I'm going to do is load that onto the second one. And let's do the same thing for the mid part. Let's find something crazy. And we have all of these different preset waves. We can also make our own with the wave editing tools up here, but just for the sake of video time, I'm going to stick up over here. We have stuttering, scratching, tape, reverse patterns, and some fine tuning stuff. So let's just check one of these out. And perhaps, you know, maybe I don't like how abrupt that is or the, the actual frequency. I can come in here and remove this stuff. So something like that might work. So I can save that here and then jump over to the highs. What do we got for tape? And let's save that here. And then I'm going to turn on key switching. And I've, all I have is a very simple pattern inside of my MIDI clip where it's going to repeat for three bars and then have sort of a fill. So let's see what that sounds like now. All right, so that's the basic idea here. Now we can go in and fine tune each one of these envelopes or filter shapes, and then we can go on from there. I don't wanna stop the video there. I wanna show you how to make some actual other adjustments using the volume shaper, for instance. Then we wanna do the same thing here. I'm gonna bypass the time. It's gonna save everything. We don't have to worry about it. And I'm gonna play this again. And I wanna make my cutoffs the same way as before. something like that, and then I can zoom out here. And what I'm gonna do is just actually go ahead and hit trash to make it a single thing here. And I'm gonna come into the high and pull it down. I'm gonna come into the mid and pull that down a little bit too. All right, and now if I turn this on, We've begun to mix the three different elements and we can actually go a bit further if I click right here and we can use width if we wanted to, to push that snare part out. But I'm gonna actually just use panning and I'm gonna do the same thing as before. I'm gonna bypass these two. My filter cutoffs are about in the same place and to turn this back on, come out. And then for the highs, I'm gonna swing it to the right. And then for the mids, I'm gonna swing it to the left. And we've come so far from where we were before, right? And you know, obviously, like I said, we can come in and really fine tune how these things sound. Let me come in here and solo this, push it a little bit further. I mean, we've done so much. Remember where we came from here. From there to there. And I just wanted to share that with you to show you that it is a really, really powerful tool. Now I'm just kind of going in here and winging it for the video. I didn't really practice too much about it, but with these three different modules combined, one uh, essentially a percussion hit with some key switching enabled just for the time shaper. And we've got a really interesting kind of loop here to get us started. Now, just imagine applying these techniques to specific things for specific reasons. And I'm sure your mind will race. Anyway, I've done a few other videos using Shaper Box and the time shaper, I believe, or something called Halftime. I'm gonna leave links to everything in the video description. So definitely check those out. And anyway, I'm Joshua Casper. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.